Agala Castle at Nathan Moyut. No, I'm Kunmatagilish. I thank you for this opportunity to come and speak with you today, to share with you, and to, uh, to be here. Um, I started off by saying, Agala Castle at Nathan Moyut. In our language, um, every time we have a gathering with with our people, you'll always hear our speakers start off that way. And Namoyut is a really important word to us. Namoyut means we are, it's the equivalent of we are all one, all my relations, all, all of those terms that you hear. And I think in its translation, it loses its significance in the sense that when we use it in our in our ceremonies, in our traditions, it doesn't mean that we all agree. It doesn't mean that we all think the same way. What it means is that for those very sacred times and those sacred opportunities, when we come together, we must act as one for the betterment of all our people. And that's our responsibility when we start like thinking about those words like all my relations and namoyut and those kinds of things. And so it's with that foundation that uh, we started Reconciliation Canada. Um, I'm the eldest daughter of a hereditary chief, uh, which means the big thunderbird, uh, Chief Dr. Robert Joseph, who many of you may or may not know. And uh, he's been involved in reconciliation for his, whole, for his whole life. He started with the Indian Residential School Movement and then moved on to, to look at reconciliation and look at how can we emerge from that time and create a better, a better future for all of our people. And <clears throat> when he first started talking about it as his, as his daughter and, and, and as somebody that's more into planning and, and into kind of the other side of the world, I, I call it. Um, I was like, oh, that's a nice idea. <laughs> and, I, and I didn't really sort of see my way in all of that because of where I come from and you know, the, the things that I believe in. Um, and so my father being my father and, and knowing his very stubborn daughter, um, and, and knowing my skill set, this is, this is the other thing that, I, that he taught me as, as we were going through this process. He said to me, Karen, you're really good at facilitating. I'm not so good at that. I need some help with this reconciliation workshop that we're having. Can you, can you come and help me? And of course, I'll always go whenever he calls. So I said, OK, OK, OK. And during the course of those two days, I had this aha moment of what he actually meant by reconciliation. And so as we started putting together Reconciliation Canada, that was one of the first things that, that we came. Number one, we brought together all people of all cultures, of all language groups, of 16 different ancient language groups, including First Nations, um, Jewish, Japanese, Chinese, all of those language groups to talk about what does reconciliation mean to us? Because there's many, many different reconciliation terminology. There's, uh, there's um, <clears throat> theological reconciliation. There's governmental reconciliation. There's First Nations reconciliation. There's accounting reconciliation. <laughs> <laughs> so I've learned. <laughs> and, uh, <clears throat> um, and so we wanted to be really, really clear about what reconciliation means to us, and it's founded in those beliefs of namuyut, of all my relations, of, of we are all one under God. And so that was a really important first step for us. But when we started along this journey, really? Oh my goodness, I haven't even got into what we're talking about yet. Okay. One of the things that makes really important sense to me is to reconcile is to re weave a stronger social fabric based on all of our unique strengths. 
That's ultimately what my father taught me that weekend, where I saw, hey, I don't have to be like him, because I'm never going to be like him. But I can bring something really important to the table, too, as can all of these groups that we brought together. And all of us are essential to creating lasting change. So long as we build that change on a foundation of values and a foundation of relationships, rather than outcome-based, trust the process. And that's what we've been doing for over a year. And we started um, with nothing. We started with a dream. And I don't know if you've, if you've read the news in British Columbia yet, but we had one of the most successful uh, walks for reconciliation <laughs> in, the, in the history of this country. And we brought together so many people from so many diverse backgrounds who are really committed to action. And Dennis, I really appreciate what you, what you spoke of earlier because it's during that process of understanding that you don't imbue reconcilia, I don't dub the reconciliatory, <laughs> but I must, it, it must come from within. It's, it starts with us. And so we've been asked, um, To, to come here to these, to these territories as the Truth and Reconciliation Commission closes. And it's not public yet. This is the first time I've ever talked about it. Um, we started with 30 ecumenical, 30 faith-based organizations working together with all of the First Nations leadership in British Columbia to develop Reconciliation Canada as a, as a moving forward point from the TRC. Two-thirds of Canadians are interested in the work that we're doing and want to make a difference with respect to the residential school. The problem is nobody's ever invited them into the conversation. And that's what we started off with what happened in British Columbia. We finally opened our, ar our arms and invited people into the conversation and said, come and bring your skills, come and bring your your knowledge, come and bring your goodwill to this process. We had over 600 volunteers during the course of, of the year. We started with nothing, and we ended up pulling off some of the most amazing things in this world based on those foundations of openness, dignity, understanding, and hope. So I hope that you come and speak with me if you have any questions. As I said, we've been invited. Uh, we haven't made any plans yet. Um, the TRC is closing in May of 2014, and we've been invited to come for, for June uh, to Ottawa, and through Ottawa, we're looking to invite Quebec and, and um, to move forward here. So, Aichka Gela Kesla.